In this video, we'll look at an example of importing SAM or BAM files into Jump Genomics. I have my file saved in this folder. This is an example of some mouse data. And these SAM files contain information on the sequenced reads that have already been aligned to a reference genome. Jump Genomics will take the aligned reads, match them up to the genes or exons you're interested in, and then count the intensities of how many reads you have for each of these genes or exons. So the import step for the SAM or BAM files, which can be found under Import, Next Gen Sequencing, it's actually generating the counts. It's not just importing the data, it's creating something from that data. And then once you have the counts of how expressed those genes or exons are, you can make statistical comparisons between strains or treatment groups or other groupings. So the goal for the SAM or BAM import options is to generate expression counts for your genes or exons. In addition to these SAM or BAM files, you're also going to need an annotation file because that annotation file, and here's ours right here, that annotation file will define per chromosome where the genes and exons start and end in the reference genome. So that file is actually going to make it possible for Jump Genomics to count your sequence reads and assign the counts to the right genes and exons. Once Jump Genomics does this, it's going to create a data set like this where it's going to count up the number of reads in that particular transcript from the start to the end that's defined in your annotation file. Okay, so to get your SAM or BAM files into this format, we're going to follow three main steps. First, we're going to gather the data files, like I have here, into one folder. Then we'll make the experimental design file, which is a separate data table that will tell Jump what your variables are. This is a critical data table for a Jump genomics process. It's needed for most of the import steps. Then finally, we'll use the importer to point to all of the SAM or BAM files in this folder, to the annotation file, and to this new experimental design file that we're creating. And all of this will get Jump Genomics to create the appropriate final data file with the counts corresponding to the genes or exons that you're interested in. There will also be one extra step for BAM files. The BAM files if I click on the process description, this will tell us this extra step for BAM files. This is required because the BAM files are a compressed binary version of a SAM file, and so we actually need to create them into SAM files first internally in Jump Genomics. So here's this tip. It says important before running this process, you'll have to do this thing. So we're also going to need to do this thing for the BAM files. We would not need to do that for just SAM files. Okay, now we're ready for the three main steps. So let's do this for the example with the SAM files that I have saved here. So first we need to locate our SAM or BAM files and the annotation, and it's a good idea just to put them all in a single folder. We need all the data files to be in one folder, and I've got the annotation there with them. So the second step is to make the experimental design file. I'll show you two ways to do this. One method is using a minimal file, and the other method assumes you don't have anything except the SAM files, that you don't have a minimal file. So let's do this first for the minimal file. This is the XML file. I'll go to Import Experimental Design File and Create Design File from Minimal. I'll choose where my minimal file is, so that's this guy. We need to choose an output folder. I'm going to make a new folder on my desktop and call it Output, and then I'll click Run. And we get the experimental design file almost completely created for us. The only thing that's missing here is the file. This should actually have the, the reference. It should have this GSM and then the number all the way down to filter.sam. This, this name of the file should show up right here. We could easily, with just six or seven samples, copy them into these file spots. But there's also another way, which I'll show you in a second, that we can get Jump Genomics to automatically pull those file names in. So you can see we have the array, which is just listing one through seven. So it's saying there are seven samples. Here's the name of the array, the title, the source. Again, we need the file name. Column name is a name, same as the array name. It's, it's a name for each of those individual samples. And then the strain, this actually, it's because the XML file is reading it in this way, but the strain actually, we should take off the number at the end of this because we actually want this to be a grouping variable that we could compare the strains to each other. So this read in incorrectly, but it's because of the minimal file. 
Okay, so now if we wanted to fill in these files without having to copy and paste back from the folder, from the file names, maybe you have 70 samples or 120 samples, some large number, you don't want to have to copy each one. If you want Jump Genomics to do this automatically, the next thing I show you would will get us the file names. It's also what we need to do if we don't have a minimal file. So we'll save this to the side, but in many cases we don't have the minimal file. And when we don't have a minimal file, we would still go to Import, Experimental Design File, but now we choose the Create Design File Template. Create Design File Template, again we choose the folder with the raw data. Tell it its count data in this case. Choose an output folder. I'm still going to use that same output folder. Check if there's anything we need to say in options, but there isn't. So then I can click Run. And now I got pretty much exactly the piece I needed for the minimal, but nothing else. So when we do it this way, we create the beginning of the experimental design file, but we still need to add in all the needed information. So here I see the file extensions I also need to clean up a little bit. So it read in every file that was in my folder. My folder did not have only my SAM files in it, so I also need to clean this up. So I need to delete this. So I'll, I just was right clicking and delete rows, and I need to do that for these two also. I can also copy these guys. And paste them in here. So now I have my completed experimental design file from the minimal process, but I don't have the completed experimental design file if I'm creating it myself. So I'm gonna start by deleting all the extra columns. While I will need a column name, I'm going to add it back in a moment. So I'll delete these columns. And now I'm going to use a tool back in the genomics starter window that says parse a column. I need to make sure that I still have this new EDF that's being formed with the one column that says file, that this is what's what I've last touched in Jump because this is the data set it's gonna think I'm working on, and this is the column I wanna parse. So I'll click Parse a Column, and I get this dialog box. I wanna use this file column. I don't need to use a prefix, so I'll delete this. I do want the underscore as a delimiter. If you look at the data, in this column called file, you can see that the column name information from the other EDF is at the beginning and then there's an underscore and then there's the name of the sample and then there's an underscore and then accepted underscore hits. So what I'm trying to do by parsing the column is pull these pieces out separately. So the delimiter to separate those pieces is an underscore. It doesn't really matter which I select for blank or direction, so I'll just say parse. So now you can see it really quickly populated a bunch of other fields. It took everything that was separated by an underscore. So I don't need columns three, four, or five, so I can delete these. And I'm just right clicking to delete those columns. I'm gonna rename column one. I just double clicked on the top of it and I'm gonna call this column name. The column name always needs to be a unique name for each row, but it may be something that's hard to understand, like a barcode, and so that's why we also do an, a sample name column. So column two, I'm going to rename to sample name. This is a, a simpler name that I might want to use as a label within some of the Within the platforms in Jump Genomics, when I'm doing an analysis, I may want to label things by that. The column name is often something kind of illegible. The sample name is usually more useful.
The sample name will also, like the column name, probably be unique for each row, but it should be something more meaningful that you could use as a label later on in an analysis. If you have multiple SAM files for some or all of your samples, the sample name will actually not be unique. It would say which, so you might have different barcodes, but the same sample name. So column name will always be unique. It's possible that sample name won't, but very often it is also unique if you have one sample per file. Okay, now we need to make a new column and call it strain. Here I want just the character part of the sample name. So I want these first two to say Cass, the second two to say Dom, and the third pair to say Mus. Because I only have six, I could type this, or I could create a formula by double clicking on this column, clicking Column Properties and Formula, Edit Formula. In this case, I'll use the substring I want to use a substring of the sample name. I want to start in the first position and end in the third position. That'll take the first three characters. So I'll say OK. And that was a much faster way if I had a lot of samples to strip just the first three characters out of that. So now these strains will be groups that we can compare later in an analysis. We still need one more. column in this data set, and that's the array column. So back at the genomic starter from import and experimental design file still, we can create array index. And single channel, each row is a unique array, will give each row a unique ID saying this is a unique sample. So that's what I want. I'll click run. And now I have my completed experimental design file with the file name, column name, sample name, strain, and array. So while we've got the minimum necessary columns for a working experimental design file, you can also add more columns to this file if you have other variables. For example, if you have the sex for the samples, you might have a column called sex that you would add in here, or you might have a treatment variable with either the dose or a, a level of treatment so that you could compare between treatments. So if you have other variables that have to do with your experiment, you can include those also in your experimental design file. The last thing that we need to do to keep this experimental design file is to save it as a SAS 7 BDAT file extension. And I like to save it in the folder with my SAM files. So I'll just go to File, to Save As, save it in my folder, maybe call it something that will help me remember what this is. And I want to save this as a SAS dataset. I'll click Save. I'll say yes, and now this is saved in my folder with the extension SAS7BDAT, and this is what I need to be able to read this in when I'm importing data. Okay, so now we're ready to begin the import process. I'll close both of these files. I won't save this one. And I'll notice that here's my new EDF saved into the data file. Okay, so back at import, we've got our experimental design file. We can now move on to next gen sequencing is where I'll find the generate counts from SAM. I'll click on this. And we need to find where our experimental design file is. We just made it, it's right here. We need to say where's the folder of the SAM files. It's the same location, so there we go. What do we want to use as an output folder? I'm going to use that same output folder I created before. Then we click through the tabs. So we go down on each tab and then click through the tabs. So I need to go to summary. I don't want the fixed bin size. In my case, I'm looking at genes. So now the annotation file will be required. Had I left it as fixed bin size, annotation would not be required. But because I want to specify specific genes to do the counts, so it's going to add up all the reads in a particular region, it needs to know what those regions are. And my annotation file has that information on where the transcripts begin and end for each gene. So I need to choose that file. And that file is in my um, data folder. 
it's this text file, and then I assign variables to roles. Things with asterisks are required. So Chrome will go into chromosome. I can use this name variable as the gene identifier. Notice it has the pound sign or hashtag in front of it. That's because you can't ever use name as a column when you're reading something into Jump Genomics because there's already an internal variable called name. So if you want to use something called name, you have to add another character with it. So it's got a somehow different, um, unique name. Then the transcript start is where the transcripts start. and <laughs> Transcript end is where they end and strand can go into strand. That's not required, but we have that information. Then I click to the next tab, the transformation. If I want to transform my data as I'm bringing in these counts, I can do it. Or if I want to leave none and have a chance to look at it and make a choice later, I can just leave it as none. And then I can also choose to remove the PCR duplicates. Selecting this box will remove any two reads that start at the exact same location. So you can choose to do this or not. The little question mark next to this gives a tiny bit more information. Remember to use those question marks when you're clicking through and you aren't sure what something is about. That will always take you directly to that part of the help. Okay, so now we can click Run. And here are the results from our generating counts from SAM data. We can look at the experimental design data and see the total counts. We can look at the summary data. This is a tall data set that's showing for each gene the count for each sample. So each of the six samples are here and the counts correspond to each gene, which is a row. We can also look at the RPKM summary data. So that's replacing the counts. The RPM summary data, the annotation data, and we see what the file names are. They're all in the output folder and so it's telling us what each of these new files are in that output folder so we know which files to reference when we're using other functions, other analytical processes later on. We can also launch follow-up processes here in this dialog box. So if we wanted to just launch the basic RNA-seq workflow from here, we can do that, or microRNA. If we want to do a gene model summary, et cetera, normalization and so on. So we can use the genomic starter to find these functions, or we can launch them directly here. If I do want to launch the basic RNA-seq workflow from here, I'll see that it's already chosen my input data set. So this is the one that ends in samdata.sas. So that's how you get SAM or BAM data into Jump Genomics. Remember there's that extra step for the BAM files that requires you to go to this link and put those files into this location. But once you do that, the BAM input engine is going to work very similar to the SAM input engine that we just saw. Okay, so good luck importing your SAM and BAM files into Jump Genomics.